uh, this is gonna, probably going to be a little bit boring for a lot of you because this is uh, some fairly high-level stuff, but we'll uh, see how it um, comes across. This, uh, forgive me, this is a uh, replay of um, a talk I just gave at Phil Toronto, so I hope you're okay with that. Um, the broad strokes of what we're doing here is, uh, you know, you see this graph and it's obviously going up like mad, all good stuff. Um, and in the broad strokes, we see how useful big data is going to be, you know, everywhere. Um, and you, you all know this, I don't need to tell you, big data is going to change the world, blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> but... You know, what you see by and large is stuff like this, right? Where big data projects are just unbelievably not successful. Like, you could flip a coin and you basically are guaranteed a, a big data job failure. And one of the reasons that we think that this is the case um, is because the tools haven't kept up. And, and these uh, data developers, and they're handed just a box of miscellaneous crap um, and they're asked to put it together to sell, and it, it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, you know who these people are, but they are growing super, super fast. They're about up 10x since 2016. So this is an audience that is awesome, they're ready to use data, and, and we give them really shitty tools. Um, when you look at where they spend their time, I thought this was a really interesting graph, um, uh, you know, more than, what, 70% of their time, they spend just prepping and looking at data. Right? It's not even using it. It's just prepping, right? And um, it's really interesting because like there's almost no work done in this, right? Like you look at the, the geniuses of the industry out there building on whatever Spark and TensorFlow and PyTorch and so on and so forth. That is like way down in those dark blue sections. It's the stuff at the start where they're like, oh yeah, this is in Euro, but I need it in dollars. So I gotta spend an afternoon doing that. So I think we can help. Uh now, one thing that's kind of interesting is like, you know, again, you probably old hat to a lot of you, but the data pipeline looks like this, right? You have that ingestion and process and you have this whole engineering. Then finally you get to training, splitting, whatever. Um, and finally you get to serving it or actually using it in your app, whatever it might be. Um, and if you're really good, you loop it all the way back. I, you know, I think we can focus on just that left part and make the data out there far more useful. So what would they like? Well, our thesis is they would like the following, right? They want it to be familiar, they want it to be simple, and they want it to be collaborative. What does this mean? Familiar is this, right? A lot of people think that when, when it comes to building a model, and I, you know, I don't just mean ML model, literally anything that you use to build to make your application smarter, they think, all right, well, I'm gonna go out and build a model. Except it's not that, it's really this, right? It's 17 steps loosely coupled together that they just, figure out how it works and, um, you know, so on and so forth. And it's really interesting because when you go and talk to these folks, they use a shit ton of tools, right? This is Microsoft, theoretically, you know, the most or one of the most advanced ML data organizations in the world. And they did a study internally, 159 different tools that they have supported, right? Like, could you imagine being the IT pro trying to figure this out? Um, a nightmare. But... The moment you try and pry one thing out of a data scientist's hands, they're going to go to their VP and like you're fired, right? So it, we got to work in the space of familiar. Now that's just the tools. When you actually get to the platforms, it gets even worse, right? If you're talking about how to do the computation, you pick one of these things on the left. When you pick, talk about the data platform that sits on top of that computation, it might look like one of the things on the right. Problem is we have too many choices. Um... And the funny part is, is like what many debate, this is my thesis, again, strong, strong opinion, weekly held, when most, but what most of them actually want, they want this, right? Said, it was invented in 1974. It's a perfectly good tool for manipulating data sets, very large data sets. So my thesis is we should bring data science back to the 70s. Um, so that's what it means familiar. You let them use the tools they already know in a place they can get to this scale and actually access it. Second, they want it to be simplified. So if you haven't seen how to run a data science job today, uh, this will be kind of interesting for you. First, the thing on the left is the housing price example. This is like the hello world of, of data science. Uh, you see there, it's just a simple Jupyter notebook. I run a couple commands, most of which are just actually printing it out. 
Um, and, you know, I, I just send it out and I can figure out what's going on. If I want to do the exact same thing you see here, mean across a set of data in the number one data science platform, this is Spark, the exact same thing. And it's not even all there, right? Like that's just some of it. Uh, like what a nightmare. And you're asking them to move from the language they know and love, Python, into Java, which is a nightmare too. Um, again, it's not bad. It's just like you're asking people to take on things that are way outside their job description. And worse, it's like an SRE thing. So site reliability engineer, this is like the people who have to keep these platforms up and running. And let me tell you a little story in one act. Uh, you have a data scientist. She says, you know, I'm ready to go. I have a data scientist that's perfect. Our data si or IT ops person says, sure, can I get to a million other things? You know, file a JIRA ticket. Maybe I'll get to it next week. Fine. So they do that. Uh, she comes back. Finally, it's pro been provisioned, the cluster that she needs. And our data scientist or our IT ops person now says, okay, um, can you go do this? Right? And that's not even all of them. Right? Rewrite it. Figure out your drivers. Figure out this. Figure out that. Like, good luck. And she's like, all I want to do is just access it. It's the simplest thing in the world. Why are you making doing this? And then she says, because that's what our platform requires. So she goes off and does that. That sucked. Uh, and then off she goes. She deploys her job. She runs and it's done. Awesome. And then they say, oh, oh no, we hope we didn't forget anything. And now they've blown it through their budget for the year, right? Again, just constant management, constant upkeep, really the opposite of what people want. And so, you know, you say data developers and entrepreneurs, the one thing they can agree on is that MapReduce sucks, which it does. I mean, it was great, but it's not 2005 anymore. So we can do better. And finally, you get to collaborative. Collaborative looks like this, right? You have these enormous data sets out there and they're super popular. Uh, there are over 350 amazing data sets on Amazon Open Data Today. By the way, we should have all of those on IPFS. Someone. Um, but before, what you would do is here you have the Landsat example, right? It's a petabyte and a half of uh, amazing, super high quality images. And let's say you have three data scientists here. One, she needs her data science tiled, or she needs these uh, lap Landsat things tiled. So she wants it reduced just down to the places um, uh, that are important to her. Second, maybe she wants it scaled, so reduce the amount of pixels so that it, it churns through the system faster. And the third one just wants it grayscale, which is actually quite common. You oftentimes will just downscale your images so that they run through your data model faster. So because if they are, you know, each image is a gigabyte, that's going to take weeks to, to accomplish your thing. Now we get to our fourth data scientist, and she says, actually, I want all three. Like, what do I do? She has to go and rewrite those things herself, even though all these all the work has been done for her. So that's not good either. So what we could do is, using the power of IPFS and the fact that all this stuff is public and content addressable and all good things, we could publish these to the world such that when our, third, our fourth data scientist comes along, she picks up the work that was already done. And by the way, when she does her you know, final thing, she um, uh, creates a fourth data set, which is now consumable from that point forward as well. So that's collaborative, real, true collaborative data science. Okay, so that's the broad strokes on what we're trying to do around compute over data with this project that I'm working on uh, called Bacalhau. Um, and that is compute over data and Filecoin. Our initial offering, and it's very, something I really wanna stress is just our initial offering, and I'll get to that in just a second, is Bacalhau. Uh, Bacalhau, the, it is a punny joke. Bacalhau means cod in Portuguese. We were in Portugal when we came up with this. Cod, compute over data, cod, get it? Um, so there you go. <laughs> exactly. I, I, if, if, I didn't, if I didn't hear groans, I wasn't doing it right. So cod. Uh, blah, 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 lots of vision words. Um, we'll go through this. Our vision is to do this, right? Like something that looks a lot like this. You add a large, you know, GPS recording. Uh, this thing, you know, says, I just want to filter this for very, you know, data sets, data points within 50 kilometers. I can do that with said. It's actually pretty easy. Um, and then I can fetch the results. Now, again, this is just kind of proof of concept, getting started stuff, but you can see the direction we're going here. Um, there's no special clusters, no transfers. I get to reuse said. I get to use mostly idle compute since it's just storing my uh, data already. Uh, familiar commands automatically resolves failure, failure, so on and so forth. Uh, and we're just getting started. Plus, and this is the killer point, right? No egress. Uh, meaning I don't have to download this massive data set to do one stupid job so I can re-upload it somewhere else. 
Uh, now, again, you can achieve this with other platforms, but I, I hope I've made the case that a lot of these other platforms, which are designed to be very high-performance platforms, should be focused on the high-performance stuff, not this stuff where you're like, all right, just get me back this filtered data set by tomorrow. Okay, so here's the little story. She submits it, she goes off, and it works perfectly, and it's all done, and it downscales itself, and then she's, uh, our IT ops person knows how many um, cat videos are uploaded every second. All right, so what does this look like? Where are we today? So all right, we wrote, we checked in our first line of code in uh, February. We did a six month or six week sprint on um, you know proof of concept, and we learned a whole bunch and figured out a whole bunch of stuff. We threw away every line of code uh, April fifth and started over um, with all the learning. And here's what we have today. So this is uh, I think last week we did this. What you're gonna see here is the experience that, that uh, a little bit more advanced experience. Um, you see here, you have a file. This is a sample directory of uh, 10 images. Uh, and what we're gonna do is these are, these are stored in IPFS. I just happened to download them here uh, to demonstrate what was going on. Um, you can see over here on our left-hand side, uh, this is the command. It certainly could be a lot easier and we're working on like getting a lot of the, de the um, defaults correct. But it looks a lot like um, uh, the standard thing. If you set out, if you exclude that stuff in the middle about concurrency and inputs and outputs and things like that, it looks just like the command that someone might execute on the command line. Magic is one of the most popular uh, image manipulation CLI tools. Um, people use it all the time. They know they often have scripts already written. And you can see there, they just are running it against the thing that was that is hosted on IPFS. Um, in this case, uh, just to answer your questions, we are, for this particular example, actually using a raw Docker container. This is the Docker container published by the ImageMagic folks. Could you say that again? No, I cannot. <laughs> this is the uh, Docker container published by the ImageMagic folks, but you can build your own Docker container, you can include your own re requirements and things like that. Um, for security and other purposes, we have networking turned off, so all jobs must be embarrassingly parallel, uh, no inner node communication. Uh, but that also provides a bunch of security and other things like that. So there you go. I ran the job. Here, you can actually watch the job uh, as it uh, takes pl place. You can see it uh, spits out and it's running there. It'll take just a second uh, to complete. Oop. Off we go. And then it completed. Oh, go forward here. Uh, and now I get my results. Here I am downloading it. Oop, a little mistake there. And you can see I downloaded that to my local file system. Each one is much smaller. You can see up here, uh, these are you know megabytes in size and these are just 17 kilobytes in size and they've all been downscaled, right? So I didn't have to think about any cluster. I didn't move stuff from IPFS. It all happened exactly where the thing was already loaded and running. Now, uh, going even further than that, we have just last week, uh, we now have a support this flag uh, determinism uh, this is, again, we're just working it out. But you can see here that we are executing raw Python against this deterministic thing. Behind the scenes, we are converting it into WASM and executing it as a WASM binary. Uh, and there you can see it's running. Uh, now when I go off and get that, it will download and uh, give me a hello world that says, uh, hi there, Toronto. Okay, so that was raw Python executed on the nodes um, you know, where the IPFS is and, or where the storage is. Um, so there you go. Okay. Uh, so that's the demo. You know, we just last week, we hit, uh, the ability to schedule 10,000 jobs at concurrency 10, um, across three nodes and, uh, had zero failures. Um, and just to prove that it did fail, that we were, our failure recognition was correct. When we got it up to 20%, or uh, excuse me, 20 concurrent jobs, we get about 30% failures. So at 10,000, we're pretty confident. And it's just up to us to figure out what the right scale is and work it out. But um, so far, so good. Uh, the project is out there and running. All right, so what about this? You might ask, no. <laughs> we're starting small, uh, not yet anyway. Certainly, we would love, come along, help. Um, uh, our current goal for uh, October is 10,000 jobs simultaneously scheduled, uh, five nines of job resolution. By job resolution, we're not saying your job is going to work, but that we have scheduled it properly and that we resolved it with whatever error code you, you said. It wasn't like our fault that the job failed. 
Uh, 100, 100 nodes simultaneous support. Uh, data smaller than 32 gigabytes. We don't want to span spec sectors right now. Uh, we are working on that. We have some ideas around it, especially with some of the advanced um, stuff out there and whether or not we use IPLD and so on and so forth. Uh, public data only. We will support determinism and we will support CPUs, uh, though GPUs is a really popular one that we get asked. On the other hand, like if you could schedule this and just finish it you know, by tomorrow and uh, not support CPUs, that's fine. Um, and then, you know, by production time, um, you know, we want to hit one petabyte of processing across many files, um, 99% of job success rate. Uh, we want to be able to support malicious nodes of uh, 49%. That will be a challenge. I'm not going to lie to you. Like the problem is we don't, we very intentionally do not have an incentivization layer yet, right? Meaning it will be easy to grief us because... Um, you can sign up for a node and then just be, you know, crappy. Um, without the threat of staking or without an economic disincentive, you're not going to be able to do that. So there's no question we're going to tackle that. It's just we want to get to scale first before then. Uh, and most importantly, uh, having a DAG execution. So being able to wire these jobs together so you never have to download until the final thing is our, our goal. Uh, I should say... Um, uh, the, we, we, you will always be up re-uploading to IPFS all the results. So again, it's got to be public only. Um, but that means you don't have to download it in between anyway. Uh, it'll just be up to like, if you want to do it all as part of one and, you know, only maintain the, the data sets, uh, when they complete, um, that's going to be October. Okay. So when I said earlier that that is our initial, it's because this is serious, right? It can't just be us. Um, when I think about that original model of all those ways to build things, I think there are tons of ways for compute to be specified by domain. So you could imagine anyone along the, the line, you know, plugging in saying, oh, I'm going to take the output of this compute over data thing over here, and I'm going to serve it off of, you know, whatever in the following way. Uh, you know, you could imagine people having different verifiers, different like hardware profiles, so on and so forth. We want to support all of these via a pluggable system. Um, and we have um, out there, go to, uh, I don't have the link up here. Oh, I have the link at the last slide. Um, but we have a very extensible system as it stands right now. Again, our goal is to provide some core components that are useful to you as it stands today, useful to the entire computer over data community. And you pick and choose the things you like. And you don't like it, great. Swap it out and off you go. Um, if you don't like any of it, that's okay too. We want to support everyone in the community. At the end of the day, it goes back to that original graph. How do we make the massive amount of data on IPFS uh, more flexible? And like Juan said during his opening, like let's remedy the fact that there isn't, you know, whatever um, uh, node in the uh, Lotus binary uh, together. Um... So you want it now, so that's up to you. Um, you can see some uh, data sets that we're already working with. Uh, I want to point out the folks in the back, uh, Richard, for uh, all the help that he's doing. I, I think you're up here. What are you doing, this, the SOCAT one? I don't know, one of them. Um, but we are already working with significant data sets today. Uh, we need more. We need lots of more. We need researchers. We need your personal data sets. Uh, we want to do a lot of like processing of uh, you know, chain data and things like that, since that's right there, like why not do it? Uh, all that good stuff. Um, uh, you know, it's not real until people are using it. Yeah. Are you, what, what kind of data sets? Don't care. Okay, there's uh, public up open pilot. Yeah, fantastic. You literally could say any words and I would say okay. <laughs> okay. No, as long as it, how do I, how do I no, but exactly to Boris's point, exactly to Boris's point, uh, it's gotta be public. That's the one thing. Uh, open crawl. Sure. It's public. Great. How do you how do you help? Just come talk to me and I'll, I'll do it. Right now, we are on IPFS, but we pre-pin the data to just our nodes so that when you schedule the job, it like will find it because otherwise it wouldn't find it. Yeah. Um, not, I mean, that's not, that's not bad mouthing Filecoin indexing. It's that we literally aren't pulling down uh, the stuff. But absolutely, just come talk to me and we'll, we'll figure it out. Looking for lots of opportunities. That last bit is the most important part. If you in any way could squint at this and say, oh, you know, I want them to use this project that I am working on, uh, you know, use my IPFS client, use my, like, uh, executor, use my WASM, 
bits. Use my verifier. I don't care. We, we would love to talk and figure out ways to, to share the um, energy and wealth and you know, help you get going forward. Um, we just launched last Thursday the Computer for Data Working Group, brand new. Here you go. Um, uh, I have a bit.ly link. I have a QR code that you're, you know, never click on QR codes. What are you, <laughs> noob? Uh, there you go. You can trust me, though. Um, so we, every week we're going to meet. We want you to demo. That's not me. That's not me, like, running this thing. It's just us getting together, chit-chatting, helping each other. This is all, all of us in it together. Like, we should come up with a shared goal. Like, we want to process whatever, a petabyte of compute over data by the end of the year. Who knows, right? Like, we're up to whatever you like. Um, and there you go. So we have Slacks. We have websites. We have this, that, and the other. Uh, a lot of this stuff is out there. I, we have a back of the hour website. Go there. There's a link to the docs. The docs are, you know, we really try hard to keep it up to date. Um, we have a repo, like I said. You can download the binary yourself today um, and mess around. And there you go. Any, oh, that was long. Any questions? Yeah. So you showed like a job running on someone else's computer. Yeah. But was there sorting and was there reducing? Was there like, was, where, yeah, where, 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 where How did it schedule? What's that? How did it schedule? Yeah, and, and if I saw like. Yes, okay, got it, got it. No, I, I, I know where you're going. Uh, uh, did it have to span multiple nodes and reduce the data back? Uh, no, it's single node only for now. Uh, you know, parallelization and sharding is coming. Uh, we hope this month. So okay, so so then the next question is like, how do you how do you express? What do you plan to support in terms of like ways of expressing that graph? Because you showed like Docker Run, you showed like Python Run. Absolutely. Uh, so so to be clear, Python Run is um, it converts to WASM, right? So like even though. It, it shows Python, it'll convert back. Uh, how are we gonna express that? Working on it now, TBD? Like there are lots of tools out there that do do this, but because of our requirements of being embarrassingly parallel, like it does mean we're gonna have to start stacking stuff together to some degree, right? Because every node that runs is not gonna have visibility into the fact that other nodes are also running that job uh, or a shard of that job anyway. So something is going to have to reduce it. We're figuring that out. So uh, I have a second question. So you do not use the Python blockchain for scaling right now, right? Correct. So it's but but you may may need to use it. May we need to have it if you want to control the parallelization. Absolutely. So there's I mean there are many things like once you get into Filecoin, there's no question we're going to need some incentivization model, right? Could be Filecoin, could be something new, could be like who knows a cross chain thing. We we truly have no opinion on that today. Um, uh, we know we need it. There's no way to prevent bad behavior without it. There's also no way to like incent um, storage providers to use it, right? Like we're literally just using their electricity for free uh, as it stands. So we have to have an incentive model, but we want to get to scale first because no, there's no value in an incentive model if the thing you know does two jobs and crashes. And so another question. So and, and the idea is that. Filecoin nodes seated the same machines where uh, uh, nodes are. That is the idea. So, but not necessary, right? Like it's you could theoretically, right? You could have it on a share, and Bakalyao could know about what's on that machine and say, like, or on the share, and then then pick up the job. Yeah. So so you sort of should be able to deploy the Bakalyao nodes wherever the data is, right? So Absolutely. You should you should discover whatever the data, and then to transfer the capital. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we do also have the ability right now in, uh, in back out, like we have it flipped on, but it's like, you know, again, not really like well uh, publicized. It will actually pull your data down from another IPFS node. Um, so theoretically, you could broadcast, again, when you get the incentivization model, right, you could broadcast to the entire world that, um, uh, hey, I'm ready to take jobs. I have all this spare compute. I'm ready to take jobs, even though I don't have the data, uh, you know, come give it to me, that you would download from IPFS to the, or from Filecoin, excuse me, to your node, run the job, and then, you know, theoretically well, delete it. And both the compute can be content addressed. Absolutely. Because compute is data. Yeah. And the data is data. Uh, yes, actually, all these jobs are content addressed. So, like, um, yeah, there you go. I think one of the other ideas in the concept as well, so 
file family has a cron primitive, as an example, that might be extremely useful. So there are no other blockchains that have a cron primitive. So like, like I, this is one of the things I said to David, I'm like, literally just cron. You, yep. you can go pay web two hosting providers, yep. $4 a month, render.com, for cron. Yep. Right? And I'm like, how many people might pay Filecoin? Absolutely. It's for cron instead. So uh, that is actually an excellent point, or that reminds me of an excellent point, which is, uh, well, what about FEM, right? We very much consider this to be perfectly complementary with FEM, meaning nothing you saw here other than the beginning of the job where we pick up from Filecoin, uh, or, or excuse me, IPFS, and submit back to IPFS connects to the chain at all, right? This is just running the job wherever it is. Uh, that said, we're not like... This is just the start. Like we would love to use FVM as potentially, and again, there's lots of thinking here, but potentially the beginning and end of the job. So instead you submit your job to the chain, FVM kicks off this entire process and resolves the process at the end, including developing consensus and things like that at the end of results. Again, lots of thinking here. We haven't begun on that. We're just trying to get to scale with the system you see today. Uh, call to action. Join the COD. Yeah, I think that's probably your best bet. Uh, yeah, join the COD. COD WUG. COD WUG. Uh, join the COD working group. It is every week. It is just come demo your stuff, learn about stuff, whatever it is, or our Slack. Feel free. Um, again, squint at this. If you can think of a data set or data provider or a researcher or whatever who might find this useful, or you can squint at this and say, I would like to partner with you to use my thing in your thing over there, we're happy to talk. Or you can say, I want to use your thing in my thing, whatever it is. There you go. Uh, we're ready to talk. Cool.